Hi guys, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Sorry about this whole setup. I just can't be bothered to set up my tripod. So we're doing the video this way. Today I am going to be reviewing The Pale House Devil by Richard Cadry. I got this one in my most recent Bumble Book Club box. And it sounded really cool. It was a um, hardback. It's really small. It's... Really, really, it's really, really a quick read. Let me just see how many pages it is. About 115 pages. So really, really quick. And I also got a signed book. Let me see if I can do this one-handed. So yeah, there we go, a little signed copy. So at first, I had never heard of Richard Cadry before. But... Looking into his stuff on Goodreads and on eBay, he's actually written quite a lot of things. Uh, I suppose his most well-known series is called the Sam and Slim series. And sorry if you can hear um, loud noises, people are saying of fireworks. So I read the synopsis and it sounded really cool. Because it's really short, I am going to be giving a spoiler-free video as always. But because it's so short, I've got to be super vague. And this is going to be my own thoughts and feelings regarding this book. So this revolves around our two main characters called Ford and Newlin. But Ford and Newlin are both killers for hire. They aren't really assassins. They go in there with all guns blazing. And they're basically paid to kill people. But there's a kind of a twist to it. Ford is a living breathing human being and he only kills dead things you know like monsters that are dead or monsters in general newland is a undead person he's not a zombie as such but he has been brought back to life so think about kind of a frankenstein's monster type of type of creature so he only kills the living so you have these two polar opposite characters that should theoretically hate each other and despise what the other person does but they work together so well they respect each other so well their friendship that yes that they are friends that is so strong and they both respect each other so at the start of the book the there is a kind of a deal or a job that they're on. I think it's in the first chapter that kind of goes sideways. And as a result of that, they have to flee New York City and go somewhere else. Because it's no longer safe for them to be in that city. So when they are trying to figure out where to go or to, you know, go to, you know, lie low or, you know, until this whole thing blows over they come across this very sweet young lady called Talinda, who is a very timid person. She's very shy. She's very, you know, introverted. I, I suppose the pe uh, best way of describing her is. And she goes up to these two and tells her that her boss or whoever has sent her to go and find these two paid killers to bring them back to um, this massive house, which is on the cover of the book, because Talinda's employer wants these two individuals to dispose of something or someone. I'm pretty sure that's what she actually says. Basically, there's a monster in the house 
that this man wants these two killers to get rid of. But this individual sees himself above for the Newlands. He's not really posh, but he's definitely got a silver spoon stuck somewhere. And when they are around him, you know that he doesn't want anything to do with him. You know he despises what they do. And you know that he sees himself above them. So when four of the Newlands are with Talinda, they kind of, well, at, at first, they are portrayed as being a vicious, cruel people that shoot first and ask questions later, or uh, if that's the case. And they are very um, good at their job, although I think that they kind of make it up as they go along sometimes. And when this girl comes into them, and when this woman comes into their lives, this Talinda character, they are very sweet. They are very protective over her. They kind of uh, t um, take her in and they're very gentlemanly towards her. They're, as I said, they're very protective over her, which is a very, very good thing. I mean, Ford as a character, he gives me the impression as being a kind of a, like a cowboy type of character. Like this, like, you know, merrily shooting, you know, not caring about anything. No cares in the world. That's that um, that type of character. But Newland, we find out a bit about his backstory, about how he was brought back to life. But because of the uh, length of the book, we don't really get that much meat on the bone. But we do find out about basically how it was um, all done, and a bit about his backstory. Just and um, just uh, just a small bit. An interesting thing about Newland is that he doesn't eat or drink anything. Well, he does have this special juice that he does have. It uh, there's an, there's a uh, list of ingredients in the book which I can't remember exactly what it is, but um, holy water and graveyard dirt is you know in the mix. And this liquid or juice. I can't remember what the juice is actually called. It does have a name in the book, but I can't remember what it's called. It gives him his sustenance and gives him his strength. But he can eat food and um, and actually drink liquids like I mean, we do. But he immediately throws it up. His body cannot digest it because he's dead, you know, essentially. So his body repels it and he throws it up. So the monster that's living in the house, we get sections in the book where it kind of describes what it does um, and what it looks like. And we kind of get a little bit of its um, backstory and what it's thinking about. So Ford and Newland have to go into this house to try to get rid of this monster. But here's the thing. Is this monster the only monster, or is there more to this case than meets the eye? So this book was really good. I wouldn't really classify this as a horror book. I would classify this as a urban fantasy book. Because, I mean, I suppose, because it's got a monster in it, I suppose you could say that it's got a twist or a sprinkling of horror. So... I really like this book. I really did. Uh, I mean, I want to have more from these characters. I do hope that Richard writes a, a, a series for this. I want these books to be a lot bigger. I mean, I would love it if there was a 300-page novel of um, these two characters of Ford and Newland as they go on to these different cases. But by the ending of this book, I won't spoil what happens at the end, but it kind of leaves on a... I would say a cliffhanger, but it leaves on the ending, which it implies that oh, yeah, some more stuff could actually happen. But I would love it if Richard just wrote a series on uh, around these two characters, and these um, I mean, just made the books a bit bigger, like three hundred pages per book. I mean, that would be really good. Then just flesh out all these characters and for the Newlands characters and their backstories, and just evolve their characters because this book was a fun read. I think that's kind of lost on us as readers. We kind of read 
because we want to achieve our, our um, reading goal for the for the um, year and just read as many books as we can. But we kind of forget that we read because it should be fun. This book, even though it wasn't perfect, even though this story has been told many, many times, this book was incredibly fun. And I would definitely recommend it to anyone, to you know anyone, um, if you're interested in horror, as I said, if you're interested in fantasy, I would highly recommend this. It isn't all gory or anything like that. It's more, um, I wouldn't say, I mean, it's a little bit violent. This isn't really for kids. There is some swearing in this book, but it's, I would recommend it to anyone. I really would. So I can't wait to read more from this author. I have ordered the Sam and Slim book because I have, well, I've bought a bunch of them on eBay. There was a kind of a job bundle or whatever it's called of about seven or eight books. So I can't wait to get into that. They aren't in order. Some of them are missing, but I can't wait to like dive into that whole Sandman Slim world. Because if if this is what Richard has to bring to the table in a matter of like 115 pages, I really want to know what he's going to give me with a full-blown novel. I mean, this was epic. But with that said, I am going to rate this book a 4 stars out of 5. The only reason why I'm not going to give it the full 5 is because it is a novella. The story of... I have heard of the story a billion times. It's not. It's nothing new to me. But it was fun. But I wanted a little bit more. I wanted a little bit more. If this was a like a three hundred page novel, then I think that it would have been fleshed out. But yeah. But you know, with, with that said, guys, uh, that's why I have to give it four stars. So that's been my uh, review for The Powerhouse Devil by Richard Cadry. Let me know, have you read this book? This book is a very new book. It came out on the 10th of October, I believe. If I'm wrong, I will have the date up on the screen. But let me know, have you read this book? Have you read anything else by Richard Cadry? Have you read the Sam and Slim series? Let me know what you think about that whole series and if there's anything else by Richard Cadry that... I need to read that you think that I should read please let me know down below I think that this is definitely an author which I am definitely going to keep my eye on going into this new year so with all that out of the way guys I'll see you in my next video